Other duties that we have as citizens is uh, the duty to work. Uh, we can see in Article 4, that, uh, which talks first about the, the recognition that, that there's a right to work, but then it goes on to say every citizen has the duty to carry out according to their own possibilities and their own choice an activity or a function which um, contributes in a, in a material or spiritual way to society. So, yeah, first of all, we, we've got to work uh, according to our possibilities. So obviously, maybe I want to be the Prime Minister, but I can't. Um, so, if there's not the possibility, and then, you know, our choice, if there is the possibility, we can choose. Um, and it talks about an activity which contributes to the progress, uh, material, spiritual progress of society. So, we, you know, we can build houses, which is material progress, or maybe spiritual progress. Maybe, you know, uh, maybe I, I can sing and... I can earn money singing, etc. So, you know, help contribute to our community. So this this uh, is another article which talks about community and sees um, work in a communal context which, you know, we contribute all to the, the common project. But then we've got another duty, which is in Article, Article 30, which is a, a, a social, um, a social article in the ethnic and social section. Uh, it says, um, it's a duty and a right of parents to maintain, instruct and educate their children, also if they're born outside of marriage. So, um, yeah, this is a social formation, the, the, the family is a social for formation, so this is about uh, our social relationships. Um, and we, we, we need to maintain, instruct, or educate these children, even if they're outside of the marriage, um, and they're not born in the context of a marriage, or even if a marriage dissolves, there's a divorce, we still have this duty, both parents, you know, even if you're not living with your children, you still have the duty to, to do this. Um, and we have another, uh, duty in Article 48, which is about uh, our political relationships. Here we're talking about the vote, um, and it says here the, the, the exercise of a vote is a civil um, duty. Now, when they were talking about the Constitution, the founders of the Constitution, when they were discussing in their commissions, you know, what, uh, whether a vote was a duty or should it be free, um, you know, should I be free not to vote? Uh, there was these two positions. They decided to say, yeah, it's a duty, but you can abstain, which seems a bit strange. So you're not, that you've got the right um, and the duty to vote, but also that vote might be an abstinence, not voting. So there's not any sanctions for uh, not voting, but uh, there has been in the past sanctions for not voting, for not turning up. And you know, you can turn up and then not vote um, and abstain. But uh, in the past, there were sanctions for those that just didn't turn up. 
Um, and it's so important because the founding fathers saw it as something that millions had sacrificed for and in the context of the time when this was discussed it was seen as something very precious that we had won and shouldn't be just uh, forgotten and and not bothered about uh, it was it should be seen as something that cost us dearly in mi millions of lives to get this vote so uh, but in reality many don't vote and this is dangerous too because if many don't vote the the ones that do vote may be more passionate and a bit more emotional and extreme and then they vote for somebody who is extreme and that doesn't really represent the moderates the people that are a bit more relaxed uh, we see in america trump um, who you know was voted only by half of uh, a half of the electorate because uh, many people didn't vote uh, and so does he really represent American opinion because his views sometimes seem extreme um, in terms of human rights and opinions on the climate etc um, so maybe uh, the people who didn't vote were very moderate, and so he doesn't really re represent uh, America, and so it's dangerous. It's not a good idea. So this is another uh, duty we have that's important. And then we've got Article 52, which says uh, the defence of the 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 the, the country, the nation is a sacred duty of the citizen. So it, it says it's a duty, but it, says, it goes a bit further. It says it's a sacred duty of the citizen, which uh, brings it to another level, uh, not just a duty, but something, you know, um, a bit more spiritual, shall we say. Uh, and then we've got Article 53, which is another duty uh, which says all must uh, contribute to public spending according to their their ability to contribute um, so we've got to pay our taxes basically but according to our, our ability so those that earn a lot should pay more towards the public spending and pay more tax and those that don't earn much, much less. Uh, they obviously, the founding fathers wanted a country where, you know, the, 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 there was a, a redistributing uh, mechanism in the system. So the, the rich do end up uh, contributing more than the poor. And in that way, they help the poor because often the services are that are used for the that are paid for by public spending are used largely by the by the poor um, to a greater extent, maybe. And so there's that article, and then lastly, another duty, the the final duty is Article Fifty Four, which says all citizens have the duty to be faithful to the Republic and observe uh, the Constitution and the laws. Um, this they wrote uh, with in mind the fact that they just had a referendum on the monarchy and many people had uh, loyalty to the monarchy and they wanted to say, no, you know, we've had the referendum, now everybody must have loyalty and, and faith and be loyal to the Republic. Uh, so there was that context. But also, um, we must remember that loyalty does not include obedience
to a government if we don't agree with it uh, and if it's doing something very wrong. Uh, we go from federal da, you know, loyalty and faith to uh, resistance even. Um, we've got in our constitution Article 24, 21, where we've got freedom of expression so we can criticise and, you know, say that's wrong, we don't agree with that. Or maybe Article 17, where we can have protests, uh, where we're free to meet and to protest and to really express our disagreement and resistance to the government. So we're not talking about obedience to a government here. Um, even, you know, if, if the government is going against the constitution, maybe we have to be faithful to the republic, we have to resist the government and not uh, just obey and follow the government. It's not talking uh, about being faithful to a government and or obedient to a government.